How's it going, everyone? Kyle from Graf Cider in Hudson North Cider Co. Um, here to show you around our facility. I'd like to say before you enter, we, we wanted to clean it all up, but you guys got us canning for the last uh, five weeks straight. So uh, it is what it is. Come on in. So welcome to Graf slash uh, Hudson North. So for those of you who know Graf, which is kind of the, the longer brand, um, uh, I'm one of the owners along with my sister. Uh, it's a family operation, and um, you know we work to make cider that's a little bit different. Um, I had another cider before this called Millstone Cellars, where we were back in Maryland. We were doing all barrel-aged, wild yeast fermented style ciders um, that I started with my father, and then came with this crazy idea to so say, you know, instead of putting these in these big bottles for high dollar prices, why can't we shrink it down, put it into cans, and make it available to everyone? Um, for those who haven't seen our ciders. Um, or maybe a missed one. I mean, we we're, we're just now a little over three years, and we've made over a hundred different styles of ciders. Um, we take inspiration from uh, first and foremost uh, European style ciders, um, and we lovingly call them uh, sour ciders, um, similar to um, Spanish style ciders. So they have a little more acidity. They're almost all bone dry. But then we also take influences from the craft beer world, laying on flavors that kind of make sense. Um, so similar to sour beers. Uh, more than anything else. Um, so in the cider world, more similar to um, European style ciders. In the beer world, more similar to sour beer. Um, we're doing about three and a half years now. I'm just gonna kind of take you on the tour. Real quick, it's not a lot of square footage, so it'll be, it'll be a quick one. We don't have a tasting room. Do we have an orchard? Uh, we don't have an orchard. We work with Minor Farms about 40 minutes north of here. Um, they press all of our juice. Um, it almost exclusively comes from the Hudson Valley unless we're in the middle of summer and then we're in juice is super short. Um, so this is uh, what we've been pretty much using every day and that we're in here. Uh, it's our wild goose canning line. Um, nothing too exciting if you haven't seen uh, you know, a production space before. It goes down the line, packs out, and you get uh, delicious cider. We actually we're packaging um, um, our new brand, which is uh, Hudson North Cider Company. Um, Going to quickly diverge onto that. So. Um, we've been making sour cider for quite a while now and uh, wanted to do something that had a little more um, appeal to the masses. So we started making Hudson North using local apples um, and we want to do something a little more than just say, hey, we use local apples, we support local agriculture. And what we really want to do is tie it in to the local landscape. I'm a transplant, I'm from Baltimore originally. Um, so, uh, and fell in love with just the, uh, the amount of access to trails up here. So um, we've been working with uh, Scenic cuts in New York, New Jersey trails um, as partners and um, have done a, a couple different events called Tap for Trails um, where we go out, we raise money to help support the local trail systems um, and 10 cents of every gallon that we produce um, also goes back to the trails at the end of the year. And it's this is for Hudson North? This is for Hudson North, yeah. They've been great trail partners. Um, been really excited, especially as things are opening back up, to get out to more, form like a hiking club hopefully soon, do some like outdoor kayaking. Uh, I'm really excited for that. It's what I got in my glass right here. That's a hazy, on the drier side, a sweet cider, eight grams of sugar versus you know 20 that you're gonna see, say, from Angry Orchard. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a little bit different. So let me continue the tour. We're gonna switch back into the Graft hat, which is what you know I've lived in Brady for the last three and a half years. Even though you are wearing a Hudson North hat. Even though I am wearing a Hudson North hat. So I'll take it back to kind of our tank area. Well, first, let's take a look at these, these these, uh, these big beauties. So these guys, we have about um, six of them in here. They're called igloos, lovingly, because they look like big giant igloos. Um, this is where all of the graft cider starts. Um, it, it gets transferred in. You can actually see this one right here sweating um, because of the, um, you know, just got delivered today. It's coming out of the cold house, middle of summer. Um, it arrives about 40 degrees. And then we let it heat up for about three or four days, which is great to get it on Friday because it heats up over the weekend. Um, the wild yeast and bacteria kind of start off for a little bit and then we add in uh, wine yeast um, to give it a little more control um, and that ferments through about three to four weeks before packaging. We make a bunch of different styles of ciders with this base um, and one of the ones that we love the most and what's kind of the core of what we do is farm floor. For that we have another process we have to always do. So once again, you know, I didn't have time to clean up for you guys, so this is what it looks like on, you know, End of, end of the work week. Brian's been good. here since 5 o'clock, so. Yay! In the morning. Five. It's 
He does our quality control. What's behind me right here is our uh, pooter. It's, uh, it's pretty much a massive oak barrel. This one's 75 um, barrels, which is about 1,000, um, 2,350 gallons. Um, what we do with this is about 10 to 15 percent of this is always a part of farm floor. So what we're doing is we're constantly taking out a, a you notice know, imagination these rungs is, a, is what we're taking out for each batch, and then we're putting back in one month age. So this has been kind of getting this layer cake effect of uh, being slowly taken out and put back in. So it's called Solera typically. Um, but this goes all the way back to our account. We've never emptied it. It's about three and a half years um, of aging. And this one really brings that light, rustic farmhouse kind of characteristic to it. Um, we move into some other stuff we're doing. So right here is our, um, our filter. This is something we didn't use in the past, but we've been getting. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> There's a cat on <laughs> it. Look, look what I just drew on there. Yeah. <laughs> Very clever. He's, you can tell he's the brains of the bunch. Um, so yeah, so like we, we're doing some new stuff here. I mean, obviously you see um, quite limited on space, but doing a lot of fun stuff. Um, before you all leave, I really want to show you, um, you know, kind of what we decided to put together for our online store for our um, Hudson Valley Cider Week pack. Um, traditionally, I would normally put in some core items, but we've been making so many fun ciders recently. Um, I just want to give you all kind of a view at what's been cool that we've been making recently. And as we walk over there, Kyle, let's talk about what everyone really wants to know. What about the tap room, the tasting room? What's going on with that? So right now, um, COVID obviously slowed down our plans a little bit, but I've been, uh, you know, we've been working on it. It's a new space, it's still in Newburgh. Um, it's going to be uh, about 15,000 square feet in total. Um, right over top of a river. It's going to be a really cool kind of, I think, piece, um, not only for our cidery, but a way to start bringing community in um, and a way with, you know, Newburgh kind of being the way it is, it's going to be a great way to start revitalizing um, this area with, you know, it's a couple of different cultural elements with indoor and outdoor um, seating um, when it does come around, hopefully uh, summer of 2020. For 2021? 2020. 2021. 2021. 2021. 2021. So these are the four different ciders that we're focusing on. And this will also be kind of a good way for those of you who don't know us to talk about our ciders. So um, let's just start with uh, Field Day. So this is a, one of our newest ciders. It is a rhubarb spritz cider. Well, what does that mean? It's, it's got a nice high carbonation, um, a rosé color to it. We use rhubarb fruit um, in a way that we haven't in the past. Um, it's uh, got one gram of sugar, 145 calories. And then also uses a blend of um, uh, dried uh, blood orange, um, rooibos, and then that 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 rhubarb um, that rhubarb juice to put a light sweetness to it. It's really delicious, super refreshing for these hot um, summer days that we're now all experiencing. Let's not give away too many of the secrets about it because they're going to have to join us for our tasting where they're going to get all of these samples. But quickly, let's go through the rest of these. So we got salt and sand, our mezcal margarita inspired cider. Yeah, so we did a limited drop of this. New York State's really only getting, um, is the only one really getting this outside of being on our online store. Um, we've done this one in the past, but as we've grown, we've continued to innovate on flavors. Um, one of the things we wanted to do with this was um, bring more of that mezcal character. In the past, we used smoked sea salt to emulate that light smoky flavor, but it, now it has lemon, lime zest, and we've used, uh, we fermented agave with this and did some light smoking. Um, this next one's what we did with our great friends uh, Finback down in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, this is Bar Design. It's a Riesling Amaro Cider. It's a really just a wild out there concept. We called it Bar Design. If you can't see, it's got, you know, a couple different uh, wings of different um, animals and then obviously, uh, you know, a human prototype. It's gluten-free. The cider is gluten-free, even though we're saying a brewery. There is, there is no beer. With all of our collaborations, typically we do a beer with the brewery we're working with, and then um, we do a cider on our end. This one has a lot of time into it. So we worked with um, Brotherhood Winery to get Riesling um, grape skins. We then fermented like an orange wine for about two months, the cider, um, for two months with the Riesling grape skins, um, and then aged it for an additional um, eight months before crafting this. Um, we took a lot of inspiration from um, orange wine and Amaro's, um, big fans of Campari, so kind of use that as a, as, a, as, a, as a starting point. 
Um, this one uses a little bit of Genesian root, um, sweet woodruff. It's infused with honey, so this is, once again, one of the ones where we have a little bit of sweetness to it. Not too much, though. Um, pours a beautiful red. Almost tastes like a uh, maraschino cherry when you drink it. It's, it's really a fun one that we did. The last one's our Book of Nomad series. For those of you who aren't familiar with Book of Nomad, it is a series that we do a new one every month with. Um, it's based around uh, pretty much a seasonal concept. So this concept was um, sake and the use of sake yeast and cider. Um, so we used a bunch of Asian fruit. We made three different batches, one that came out in, um, uh, this is the one that came out in May and then we did one for April and March. This one is with yuzu, peach, um, along with um, nectarine and uh, smoked oolong tea. Um, it's a really kind of cool riff. Um, we've been just playing around with a lot of different of these um, sake yeast fermented ciders infused with not only uh, Asian fruit, but then really cool, interesting teas that we thought complemented. Since we're not in Europe, a lot of the ciders that we have um, don't have high tannin. So tea's a really interesting way of achieving that. Obviously, teas are bringing a lot more than just the tannin along with them. So playing on that with the different uh, fruits and um, dried uh, citrus um, and other things that we've worked with has been a really fun kind of uh, series for us. Up next is uh, slushy ciders, which we're really excited about. It's all about bringing back the nostalgia, um, using kind of what you would have found in your local um, 7-Eleven and then um, obviously graftifying it, playing with interesting fruits. Um, the first one out is going to be um, a pineapple, blueberry, uh, lime, where we ferment half the fruit and then back sweeten with the blueberry and pineapple. It's gonna be a really, really fun one. All just riffing on nostalgia and then really just getting a deep blue natural color to kind of play off that that deep over the top color that you get from slushies. So and where can they find this if it's not in stores? If it's not in stores, you can find it in our online shop. Um, go to graftcidery.com. Um, not only do we list our graft ciders there, but also um, our Hudson North, and then we also have a sister company called Flora Wines, which is a like a low-cal wine spritzer. Um, as you can tell, we do a lot of different things here. Um, we like love to, flavors. We love flavors. We like to make things that are fun and interesting, and we think have a use for everyone. Um, but thanks so much for kind of just coming along with me today. Really excited for our tasting room to open up in our new facility. It's going to give us a lot more space, much needed right now. And I uh, hope you all can come and make it out there. I'd love to, love to share a glass of cider with you. On that note, cheers. <laughs>